this is the Gaming Rev, and today we are looking at Common Hood, a game of homeless survival. A reminder that this game is in beta at the, testing at the moment, and so things may change from the video as you see it now. So today it's day three in Common Hood. We're going to get on with building a few more planters for the gardening area, uh, clear the rest of the debris, and allocate a uh, moat to do some useful work. So again with the building of the plants, we're using the blueprints, it's quite straightforward. For those of you who haven't seen my previous video, uh, you choose the material you're building in, you wait to make sure you've got the green highlighted flashing squares, and you just drag the material along. And it's as simple as that, it will show you what you need to build next. Um, this works really well for smaller items, for larger items it can be more tricky and I will go through that um, in a later video. The other thing you need to keep an eye on is obviously resources that you've got. Uh, this is one of the reasons I built 240 uh, units of 4 before wood simply because I knew that if I didn't have massive amounts I'd have to keep running back and cutting the stuff every, every so often so it's always worth keeping an eye on what you've got left in your resources and maybe going and doing some more uh, basic crafting before you get round to it and again remember that you can set community members to do crafting work for you as long as there are resources in the community storage now you've just seen here um, the seeds disappear. If you want to go back and just have a quick look. For some reason when you plant the last but one seed, the last seed disappears until you do something else. Um, I don't know why. So we're going to set uh, Mo to do some work now. So I'm going to add job for all of them. All you need to do is left click on the build to change it to farm and left click on the crop type and change it to whatever you want. For the moment I'm going to change them all to potatoes because that's all that I've planted. But in theory you can set him to deal with four different crops throughout the course of the four hours that he'll work for you. So there's Mo now, he's wandering off to get some water to start watering the plants that need it. I'm going to go and start working on the, uh, the debris. This is the guy that does the farming supplies by the way so as you can see Mo is filling up with water at the moment um, he's wandering up to the plants and planters now here we are so as you can see when he's set to care for plants and tend to them he will go and do all the work that needs to be doing the watering um, and harvesting but as I said I think in the previous video you still need to be the one that plants all the crops. So as you can see, digging through the debris, getting all sorts of good bits and pieces, um, water bottles, scrap metal, raw wood, copper wire, all things that are needed for other manufacturing projects. And it doesn't take too long to clear these basic debris piles. Um, the ones later on that require better tools can take forever and it's better to get your um, your community members to do that for you if you can. So now we've cleared the area, here's Ash coming to uh, ask us to do her a favour. Now that we've cleared an area that they can actually work in, she wants us to build effectively a work site for them. Um, a planer, which is a machine that shapes wood down into wood planks or wood panelling. Now, machinery and equipment are built at the workbench, which is next to the uh, saw that I placed. 
We're also going to pop some more food into the community food storage. Now Moe's going to be eating it. So I'm going to head down here first because there's some more bits and pieces, including electronic bits and pieces, down underneath here. The gas can will also be useful, and uh, so it help me to run the uh, the generator a bit more. Now there are two other gas cans there, but they don't seem to let you want let you pick them up. I don't know why. And I think that's it. Yes, it is. Okay, so we're going to go back up the top now. And go have a look at the uh, the workbench. Now, as you can see, workbench condition is zero. Um, it needs some repair work done to it. Which means we need to get hold of those pieces and actually use them. Uh, Rhett explains to us about the workbench and the repair work it needs. So I just wander through his conversation and then we wander over to Alcott, so the chap you can see standing by the table at the uh, far left hand side. He's the guy that uh, goes around scavenging for bits and pieces that we can buy. More importantly, he's the guy that will sell the stuff we make um, at the local markets. So we can make money off him, and we can make quite good money off him. So if it was actually this easy to be homeless, uh, most people wouldn't be. given us a blueprint for a chair that we can make and sell um, in all honesty I wouldn't bother I'd keep it in case you want to use it as decorating um, and obviously to complete the mission the selling him a chair we're buying the tools we need to repair the workbench and then we'll head back once you've built the workbench you can build motors and motors make a lot more money and they're quite quick and easy to build um, you can make sort of thousands of dollars in a day. As I say, if it was really this easy to be uh, homeless, nobody would be, because they'd have made a fortune within the first week. Uh, so from that point of view, it's not realistic. But it does give you an idea of what has to be done. Now we are. So that's all fixed, but until we leave the screen, it won't actually repair itself. So we've got to come off the screen and then go back to uh, talk to Rhett again and he will tell us that it's not broken anymore here we go So he's looking to get the big gantry crane that you can see above his head working again. Um, the idea being that he can drop a bridge across the sinkhole to get to the other side. So he wants you to build three motors to put into community storage. I'm actually going to build the parts and so on for about 20 of them because that will give me a shed load of cash to get on with it. But to do that I need Electronics 101. So we go to Dad's study books. Here we are, my cinder blocks. Open up the tech tree. Um, you can't scroll on it. So you have to drag and drop or drag the scroll bars. Click on electronics and you'll start studying it straight away. And it takes half an hour. Now I'm going to run through it at normal speed while I talk about the tech. But if you want to fast forward time at any time, you can press the space button. And that will move you forward a lot faster. 
and it's very useful when you're researching things that take three, four, five hours or more to, uh, to study. Once you've researched the tech, you have the skills then to use the items from that research. So we'll be able to use the workbench and build electronic items, uh, which makes life that little bit easier. Community storage, which we're looking at on the help tutorials, are the boxes up by Olcott. So here we go. So for the uh, motor, we need gears, copper wiring and junk metal. So we're going to get the copper wire to make it into electrical wires. Um, we're going to create a hundred of those. And that's going to take about 200 copper, but as I say, we'll find resources all over the place. Um, so it's not a major issue. Next we're going to go for the gears which requires four scrap metals, so put a load of scrap metal in and again we're going to build about a hundred of these. And again all you do to build is just click and hold until it gets to the right number and then take your finger off. Um, it, it's not that difficult and as I say with the load all collect all it also makes life a bit easier for you um, putting all the resources you need in where you've got things like the motor that needs more than one item to complete struct it. So having built all the parts and collected them we're going to build the entire motors now. Um, I'll drop some scrap metal in just to restore it to 100% because it works faster the better repaired it is. So again click and hold and we're going to crank out 20 of the um, motors, three of them to go in the community storage at some point and the other 17 we're going to sell to Alcott. Now the motors sell for a hundred apiece, so that means that just on day three we'll have managed to make seventeen hundred dollars in profit and that's in the space of a couple of hours. So let's give these to Olcott and then it'll be the end of the day, time for bed and we can sort out the community storage tomorrow morning. I'm going to drag three off separately to save them. You do that just by right clicking and dragging and then left click and drag for the rest. Sell for the 1700 and there we are, 9 o'clock, time for bed. So that's the end of day three. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at a bit more building, finishing the community storage and maybe starting work on the crane project that Rep will give to us. One on the community and $1,700 profit. Not bad. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. Please leave comments if there's anything you'd like us to cover in the next Common Hood video. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.